I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to do this netting featuring Potomac Crystal by Cones. It's been a while since we've done this beautiful netted bracelet and I wanted to revamp it and re-show it. Remember you need any of the supplies? Go ahead and look below the video in the description. We can get links there back to our website and then you can check out all the materials that you need. Gather everything up on your bead on a board and let's get started. So to start off the project, we are going to be using four millimeter bicones. You can use any size, some 15 O's and some 11 O's. Our 11 O's are going to be where we cross over and connect. That's my secondary color. My primary color is going to be my 15 O's that create the X around the netted look here. I have a stop bead and I'm adding that to a size 10 needle and some size six gray dragon thread. With the black crystals, I would recommend a black or a gray, keeping in mind what crystal or what CB colors you have. If you have a clear, you're gonna want the gray uh, working with black. If you have crystal, crystal clear, you may even still wanna go with the crystal. Some things to think about. I have a stop bead on here and I'm not letting a ton of thread at the end, even though I still need to come back and I'm gonna show you how to close it up to add your beautiful clasp guard in class. I'm not leaving a ton of thread because at some point we're going to need to add extra thread. Even if you're starting off with five inch or five feet of thread, this one uses a lot. So I'm going to actually keep going till I run out of thread, tie on, and then we're going to start the bracelet going the other way. So the knot is actually going to be in the interior of our bracelet rather than at the end. What we're going to begin with is an 11 OC bead followed by a bicone, and we're going to do that three times. Once you have those six beads on there, go let, ahead and let them fall down right towards that stop bead. Now what I want you to do is take your needle and thread back through that first 11 O C bead, the first bicone, second 11 O, second bicone, and come out after your third 11 O C bead. Give a nice tight pull with that, pushing it down kind of towards that stop bead, and you have a little triangle formation. With that triangle formation now, we're gonna make what almost looks like a little flower. Coming out of the 11 O's, I want you to pick up one, two, three of your three of your 15 O's, one 11, followed by three of your 15 O's. This is gonna to continue to be the pattern the whole way through the bracelet. You're gonna skip over the next four millimeter bico and sew into the next 11 O C B. We're gonna do this a total of three times. Three 15s, 111, three more of your 15s, and then into the next 11. You can also do this all with 15s if you want. Completely up to you. You can change it to be six millimeter beads if you want it to be thicker. You can go in and instead of doing three beads at the start, you can do four beads so you have a bigger inner core. Up to you. Lots of variations can be done. Now we're going to do what we call a step up. So I'm going to go back through that first 11 OC bead that my thread was coming out of. I'm going to pull our thread through here. And you can see that's a nice little pretty earring to match your bracelet here. What we're going to do is step up through the 15 OC beads that you added first, and we are going to exit through the next 11 OC bead. The 11 O's that sit at the top of all of the bicones is what we're going to grab onto now. We're going to add a bicone, go over to the next top of the triangle, and sew through the next 11 OC bead. This is going to nestle the bicones right in between one another and start to get that tubular shape. Grab another one of your bicones and into the next corner 11 O. Grab another bicone. Yep, you guessed it, into the next corner 11 O. Now, interestingly, we don't need to step up yet. What we need to do is make some more of our netting to go around our bracelet. You have that nice zigzag formation and you know exactly what to do. You're going to add one, two, three of your 15s, followed by one 11, followed by again one, two, and three 15s. Skip over the bicone just like we did previously and go through the next 11 OC bead. Push those C beads a little bit so they sit on top of that bicone. They won't sit exactly on top of the bicone. They're going to sit basically to the front and the bicone gets nestled inside of there. A little bit hard to see with that gorgeous crystal sample that um, Cheryl made. And we're continuing around then, adding those seven beads. 315s, 111, 315s. 
circling around and going through the next 11 up. Once again, one, two, three, one, and then one, two, three again. Once those are on, we're back to that original 11 out, and now here's where we step up. So we're gonna step up through the next three 15s here, the ones that you just put on in this row, and come out through your first 11 out. When we're here, push those all up towards the top, Time to add your four millimeter beads. Add a four millimeter, sew through the next 11. Four millimeter, through the next 11. And we're just continuing around here. Four, through the next 11. Once you're through that next 11, if you've added all three of your beads, Time to do your netting again. Annabella picked out, my daughter picked out beautiful colors for this, and I think it's gonna look great with a crystal one to have the red and black. Has a little bit of a Disney feel, but also a very classy feel. Continue to add on the whole entire way. I'll go over then how we can make it into a bangle and sew it together, or how you can add your clasp. Just to show the progression then, you can see again, those bicones kind of take a back seat to the C beads that sit in front of the piece. This one has that gorgeous wedding look. This one has the bold contrast where you really see the C beads. This one's a little bit thinner because in the middle here of the pattern, Cheryl used 15 O's. I used 11's to show you how it's just slightly a little bit thicker using a slightly thicker bead. I'm about three inches in and I started with approximately three and a half feet of thread. Usually five is what I start with, but when I'm recording smaller so you don't have to watch me pull through as much. Now what I'm gonna do is actually do my clasp on one end and then I'll tie more thread onto the starter end. Just gives me a different uh, thing to do so you're not doing the same thing over and over again. We're coming out of the last of one of our little petals there, creating our little triangles. And what I'm gonna do instead of adding a bicone is add an additional 11 O. So what it's gonna look like is a closed circle, basically of six 11 O's. Add an 11 go through the next 11. Add an 11, go through that first 11, as well as the second and the third, and come on out. See how that closes it there and makes it nice and finished off at the end, almost like a cap. Now what we're gonna do is attach our clasp to this, and I've chosen a clasp and clasp that's a little bit more rounded, and it has this beautiful crystal inlay to it. I thought it would go great with our crystal and our silver and our black. What I'm gonna do is coming out of that one 11 right there, I'm gonna sew into one of the interior 11 O's. So it's kind of hard to see, but that interior of 11 is one of the ones we just added. From here then, I'm gonna grab my end of my clasp, and I'm gonna start with my tongue so that we don't have the weight of the clasp hanging as I'm working. You're gonna look and count one, two, over to the next third, and sew through the third one as well. It's gonna pull that clasp kind of right in the middle there. If you want to have a little bit more hold, to hold on to, you can also add 15s before and after. After that 11 ohm, I'm gonna go up through the clasp as well, back through the same way that my thread was coming out, and then that same 11 ohm on the opposite side that the thread was coming out of, go in the opposite way. I'm gonna repeat this two more times, and then tie off the thread ends coming out of that bead, going through the clasp, going to the opposite side, going through the 11 O. After going through the 11 O, making sure my thread's not caught on my clasp there, go back through the clasp, and back through the 11 O that our thread was originally coming out of to complete that end. From here, I'm gonna sew down into the project, going through the 11, going back down through my netting here. Make sure again, your thread does not get caught on your clasp. I always like to keep an, a beading awl or a beading um, reamer kind of with me. I like the end of it, the awl is my favorite here. Going in them, I'm gonna go through this silver bead. And because I'm, my thread is gray, 
I'm going to make my knot right next to my silver bead and then tuck it in between the bicomb. I'm going to go underneath a bridge thread, which is a thread that connects the beads from one to the other, and the thread basically between it. Create a little loop, sew through the loop once, sew through the loop twice. Make sure it's between two beads and not over top of one, and then pull nice and tight. I'm going to feed my thread through the next bicone, pull that knot into the interior of the bicone, grab your thread burner or your thread zap, burn that thread down, and then down close to the project, balling up the end a little bit, and it disappears there, you don't even see it. Now what I'm going to do is tie on my thread to the opposite side and continue on with my bracelet. One thing that I want to point out here is that you can actually, if you want to, put this on memory wire, feeding that down through the core. You can again do four beads, five beads, six beads as you're going along, and I'm excited to add my clasp to the opposite end. Now, connecting my new piece of thread to the opposite end so I can continue to bead and then add my clasp, I have my new thread and my starter thread. I'm going to tie my new thread around the starter thread, just in a knot, that allows me to move it up and down the project. I'm going to pull it down by pulling the two opposite ends, and I'm going to tie them together. What I'll do then is put a needle on the end of my original thread, weave it back into my project, and um, burn off that one end there. And then the end from the new thread, that's my shorter one here, I'll burn, burn close to the project. From here, I'm going to put my needle on this next five feet of thread that I have, going in, taking a needle nose pliers, flattening out that nice thick size 8 thread, going in with my size 10 needle, and putting the needle onto the thread. Once I have that on the thread, ready to go, and continue on with your pattern here. Picking up my next thing is going to be my next piece of my netting, adding my 15 O's and my 11 O's in between. Once you finish up your netting, you're just going to add your clasp at the other end, just like we did in the beginning when we put that little um, tongue on, and then your bracelet is complete. Now, I wanted to tell you about how to go in and to make it one bracelet if you want to. I've seen beautiful bangle designs of these, fun color block where you do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and do it as a really cool rainbow slide on bangle. When you are coming out of your last little bead section here and you're putting on your end, instead of adding in a silver bead between the last three beads, all you do is hook it to the starter side of the black bicones, and that's it. It becomes a really, really simple, nice bracelet, easy to go, and I can't wait to see everybody's designs and a little thank you to Cheryl for giving me a nudge to do this video again since it's like 10 years old. Thanks so much for joining me in this crystal netting bracelet. Remember, if you need any of the supplies or you want to make your own or check out some of the beautiful clasps you can use, go ahead below the video in the description of the video. There will be a link there that you can get back to our website. As well, if you have not yet, subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads and you learn when we have new videos and new designs out. Thanks so much for joining and stay tuned, Potomac Beaters, for more inspirational designs.